just like Jesus, I want to vomit you right out my mouth when I hear these things. This corny Christianity. It makes me sick. It sickens me. It disgusts me. It makes me want to vomit. Hey fam, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, we are going to be talking about what is a lukewarm Christian and what is up with all of these weak, whiny, pathetic, cowardly people going around acting as if they're a Christian. Oh, don't judge. Oh, you need to be more loving. As a Christian, I think that's mean. All of those people, they need to sit down real quick because stay out my lane. I'm over here trying to preach a gospel, so just sit down. But before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with a bell with a parenthesis so you're notified of a new gospel message because of course, Satan and YouTube and Google, they're one and the same, but they do not want you to know the gospel and they will never notify you of a new gospel message unless you hit subscribe with a bell with a parenthesis. So let's get started. But before we jump in to talking about all of these annoying Christians and all this lukewarm nonsense coming out of the church today, I do need to let you guys know like a little update because this past week was the first time in over a year in like a quarter, I guess, that I actually did only one video instead of three videos, but I made it extra long. It was like 40 minutes. And, uh, the reason why I did that is because I had doctor's appointments. I had a wedding to go to, I was traveling out of state and I just didn't have a lot of time to sit down and make three distinct videos. And I've heard from you all that you want longer videos. Well, I can sit and talk forever, but <laughs> I also have to manage my life as well. So I'm thinking about only doing two videos a week from here on out, but they're going to be longer videos than my typical three. So instead of three short ones, I'll do two long ones and you're actually getting more time where, where I'm speaking with you. But instead of doing like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm thinking about doing Tuesday and Thursday just because my traveling schedule is so like... I always travel in and out on Mondays and Fridays. So trying to put together videos on a Monday and a Friday is is getting a little ridiculous, especially if you want longer videos. So tell me down below in the comments what you think about longer videos twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays instead of three short videos, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So again, let me know down in the comments below. But let's talk about these faux Christians. And the reason that I need to bring this up is because I know we've been doing all of these series and yada, 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 but we have been neglecting finishing up our series about Genesis. And, you know, we go chronologically through the Bible, like verse by verse, and it usually takes about a month to do uh, one chapter of the Bible. And, you know, we are going to be getting to Sodom and Gomorrah, and it is not politically correct. It is something that is going to piss off a lot of people. There are going to be people clutching their pearls. Oh, how dare you? Jesus said to love everybody. You're judgmental. You're a fundamentalist. And it's like, okay, hold on real quick, real quick. Let me get my hair out the way. But uh, we need to teach what the Bible actually preaches. And I know that there's going to be people all up in my comments offended. They're so offended. And as Christians, they're going to have something to say about it. And I see this online. I get it all the time on uh, social media. And I see other content creators having to deal with the same thing. And it's not just online. You'll always deal with these weirdos. Like, they're just weird. And, you know, even back in the Bible, the apostles had to deal with them. Jesus had to deal with them. The prophets had to deal with them. The patriarchs had to deal with them. And it's just these weak, cowardly people. They love the accolades. They love the attention of men. So they will piss on every other Christian that's out preaching the gospel because they want to be like, oh, look how cosmopolitan I am and I'm with it with the times and I'm so modern and updated and I'm not a bigot like everybody else. And it's like, no, you're teaching another gospel. You're just another snake. You're another wolf in sheep's clothing. You're a false brother. You're a snake. You disgust me. That's what I think when I think of all of these pansy, weak, wimpy Christians who are always the first in line to come at real Christians who are out preaching the gospel. 
So I want to talk about this because I know they're going to show up. I know they're going to show up. And when you preach the gospel to your friends and family, they're going to show up on your door too. So let's chat about this so that we can get suited up, mount up, regulate, whatever we got to do, because these false brothers, they're coming. So let's talk about this because anytime you try to preach the gospel, especially on controversial issues where the Bible and the world disagree, you're going to have these losers, these weirdos go, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian and I don't think that's very nice. You're always going to have these weirdos all up in your face, all up in your business trying to discredit you. So you need to be prepared because... These people are not real Christians. Let's get this out of the way real quick. These people are not real Christians. They can go to church every single day. They can volunteer at church. They can teach Bible study. But you know what? They're not in it because they want to see people come to Jesus. They don't want to see people get saved. They want everybody, all eyes on them. Wow, you're so holy. You're so righteous. They love the accolades that come from men, specifically from the world, because like they're the white knights of religion. So for you guys who are maybe not familiar with this term, white knights, this is a guy in the dating scene who is just a complete loser. You usually see him on forums. Uh, he is usually defending some woman who is reaping what she sowed with her bad choices in life. And now that she's reaping them, she wants people to feel sorry for her. And when people are like, um, I don't feel bad for you. You'll have some neck beard, some white knight oh, defending my lady. And it's like the only reason that he's defending her is because he thinks he's going to get brownie points with this woman. Like, oh, if I defend her against all these other online strangers, then she'll want to sleep with me. And it's the same way with these weirdo, like lame, fake Christians who think that they're the mouthpiece of Jesus over here. That's mean. That's not nice. Now, one of the things that I want Christians to do is I want them to be bold, I want them to be brave, and I want them to be strong when it comes to preaching the gospel because so many Christians only teach love. Love, 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 And it's like, hold up, hold up, because throughout the Bible, it's not just about love. There is justice. There is holiness. There is righteousness. And if you're not teaching all of that, you're preaching a different Jesus. You're preaching a different gospel, and you better be teaching the full counsel of God. And Paul tells us this in Acts 20, verse 27. He said, I did not neglect. I did not hold back. I did not shrink. He uses the word hypostello, which means to pull back or to back off specifically because of uh, a conflict. I didn't back off from giving you the full counsel of God. He said, I do not hold back from teaching the full counsel of God. And you might be wondering, what is the full counsel of God? Well, let's go over to Jeremiah and see what is the full counsel of God. Jeremiah 9.24 says, but let him boast, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. Did he say, oh, I'm a God of love, full stop, that's the end, period, goodbye, game over, chapter's done. No. He's steadfast love, justice, and righteousness. But so many people don't teach on God's justice or his righteousness because people won't like them. People will say that they're mean if they teach on these things. And you know who's saying, oh, you're so mean? Other fake Christians. And I got a real problem with them. They got me real pressed. And it's not just them doing it to me. I see them doing it to content creators all over the place. These phony frauds are everywhere. They're cowards. They're losers. And they're the first one to be all up on you. Oh, you're not being very nice. As a Christian, that's not how we really behave. That's not very loving. And it's like, first of all, I don't know who, who you think you are, but you're not one of us. You're not with this clique. You're not one of us. You're a fraud. You're a phony. You're a fake. Because 
The full counsel of God must be taught. We can't just talk about God is love, God is love, God is love. Yeah, God is love, but he's also righteous. He's just, and he demands holiness. Be holy because I am holy. And you can't teach holiness if you don't teach justice and righteousness. And so many people, so many frauds, so many fake Christians up here twist the scripture where they're, they want to tie your hands when you are out preaching the gospel to say, oh, the only justice is going to be when Jesus returns and he has judgment day and anything before then, it's going to have to be anarchy because it's unloving if you tell somebody that what they're doing is wrong or what they're doing is a sin. Forget that, you phony, you fraud, you satanic. And I have no sympathy for y'all. No sympathy for y'all because Jesus practices righteousness in the earth. Not, oh, in the future at some future date. No, he uses his people to carry out justice and righteousness today. This is why he appoints governments. This is why he tells us to pray for kings and leaders so that we can live quiet and peaceful lives. But if we cut God off at the knees and say, nope, we can't have justice. We can't have righteousness. We just have to love everybody. And love to these people means uh, just condone everything. Do what thou wilt. Like you're a Satanist. Aleister Crowley over here. This is Crowleyism. It's satanic. It's not the gospel. This isn't love. This is anarchy. This is Satanism. So they want to teach, oh, you can't uh, tell anybody that anything is a sin because then you'll hurt their feelings. And that's not nice. That's not what a real Christian does. And Nope, nope, no. Nope. Because Ecclesiastes 8.11 says, Because the sins against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the heart of the children of men is fully set to do evil. So we have to warn people. And not only do we have to warn people, but as just human beings in general, we have to have order. We have to support governments in carrying out justice. That is the Christian thing to do, is to support governments in carrying out swift justice against people who do evil. Because if you do not, more evil abounds. And when more evil abounds, more innocent people get hurt. And you know whose fault it is? It's yours. Because you didn't step up to the plate and say anything. You didn't help execute justice. And we're not talking vigilante justice over here. We are talking about with the government, with laws, with order, but so many of these phony frauds are like, oh, that's so unloving. <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> Just like Jesus, I want to vomit you right out my mouth when I hear these things. This corny Christianity, it makes me sick. It sickens me. It disgusts me. It makes me want to vomit. That's what I think about all of these phony fake Christians over here. I love, you can't say anything. <laughs> okay, well, Jesus said it's going to be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than it was on the Day of Judgment when he rolls through for all of these other cities who reject him. And if you don't tell people this, their blood is on your hands. So if, is that what you want? Is that what you want? And if it's going to be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah... What did Sodom and Gomorrah do? We got to talk about it so that we can avoid their fate. We don't want people to have to go through Sodom and Gomorrah. But if we don't tell them, if we don't execute justice, if we don't talk about justice and righteousness and holiness, how are people going to know? Oh, wait, they won't. But so many people are so concerned with their standing before men. And guess what? The world doesn't care. The world is never going to like you no matter how much... You bend over and lick their feet. Like, oh, oh, I hope you like me now. They're never going to like you. They don't like you. They don't care what you have to say. They'll use you and abuse you for their purposes. So if you want to uh, compromise with them so you get brownie points and uh, claps and pats on the back, go right ahead. But don't even, don't even pretend that you're a Christian when you do it. Stop speaking as if you're one of us because you're not in a clique, you're not in a family, so stop using the name. So we've already talked about that right up here too. People taking God's name in vain. It's not saying, oh my God. It's stop using our name when you're not one of us. You're not part of the family. I don't even know you. 
you're twisting the gospel, get out. So that's, you know, that is such a problem in Christianity. So many people are cowards. They're afraid to actually teach what the Bible has to say because they care more about what people have to say than about what God has to say. And it's going to lead people to hell. We have to listen to the Holy Spirit and do what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. What does James say? Don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. So you can't just hear, oh, oh, I know these things, but then never do it. And part of that is sharing the gospel, sharing the full counsel of God. And so many people, they hear these things, but they don't want to share it because, oh, it's, it's not my place. Yeah, it is your place. So get right, act right, stop being a coward, and tell people about Jesus. Because what I see today is people acting like they're from the church of Laodicea. So let's talk about the church at Laodicea, because Jesus had a whole lot of things to say to this church. Well, the church of Laodicea is referenced in Revelation chapter 3, and this was a city in what is now modern day Turkey. It was right on a river and they were rich. They were super wealthy because not only did they just have like a lot of money in general, but they had an infrastructure where they had a medical school and they produced an eye ointment. And we all know that the richest drug barons are in the pharmaceutical game. And it's the same today as it was back in Jesus's day. So right after... Right after Jesus, you know, went back up into heaven, a couple decades later in Laodicea, there was an earthquake. And this is still, there's still apostles walking around. This is in 60 AD. And they have an earthquake. The town is destroyed. But instead of appealing to Rome for assistance, like, hey, we need y'all to help rebuild Rome. No, Laodicea, they gathered up all their money and they rebuilt on their own. And they are so proud. Look what we can do. We don't need Rome. We'll just do it on our own. We can save ourselves with all of our wealth, with all of our riches over here. And Jesus is like, You over here think that you're going to save yourselves. You guys are so proud of your wealth and all the things that you create. And he's like, no, you say that you're rich. And he says, for you say, I am rich. I have prospered and I need nothing. Not realizing that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. So these people, they're Christians or they they at least go to church, but you know what? They hear the gospel, but they're still trusting in all of their works. And Jesus is like, no, it's not about your earthly riches and all the things that you do here and your eye ointments and all this other stuff. He's like, no, you need to buy from me gold refined by fire. And we already did a video about that. I'll put that right up here. What that metaphor means. Like he's going to test your works and all of the garbage, all of the extra stuff that's going to be burnt off. And all that's left is what Jesus has done for us. And, you know, so many people, they don't realize that. They're still trusting in their own religiosity to save them. They love the world. They love being in the world. And the people at Laodicea did too because they loved their little city. And here's the deal. Back then, they needed to pipe water in. It's not like you just go to your faucet, turn it on, like, now I'm going to get a drink. No, they had to pipe it in, and it was not uh, it was not as nice as it is today, where it's like, oh, I have my, my water tank at home where it heats it or cools it or whatever it does. No, so whatever came out of the pipe, that's the temperature it's coming out of. But at Colisei, the water was really ice cold. And you know what? The people at Laodicea, they wanted ice cold water too because everyone knows when it's really hot, do you want to drink a hot drink? No, you want to drink a cold drink. This is why people eat ice cream. This is why people put ice cubes in their drinks. Like, you want to be refreshed. That's why you have a cold drink. And at Colossae, what the the book of Colossians was written to... They had ice cold water. They were at the foot of a mountain. All that water will freeze you to death. Now, 
over in another town, still in the same province, uh, was a city called Heropolis, and it was situated on a hot spring. And y'all know when you're not feeling good, when your muscles are sore, you go to the gym, what do you want to do? You want to sit in hot water because it soothes, it heals you. And did Laodicea have the hot water? No, they didn't. So they had to pipe in these waters. But because this is, you know, 60 AD, the six miles that it travels to get to Laodicea through these nasty pipes, that water's lukewarm. And what does Jesus say? He said, I want you to be either hot or cold, but you neither. So I'm about to vomit you out of my mouth. It doesn't just say spit. It does not say spit. It says vomit you out of my mouth. Now, the Greek word that Jesus used for be either hot or cold, or I will vomit you out of my mouth, is emeo, which means to vomit. To... That's what Jesus thinks when you're lukewarm over here. And so many people will be like, oh, you have to be on fire for God, and you have to go to church every Sunday and be involved in the worship team. That's not what Jesus is saying. Because the Word of God does two things. It's a healing balm. It soothes you. It has healing properties when you hear. That's the Word of God when it's hot. But when it's cold, when you have the hard, cold truth of the gospel, it's refreshing to you. So either give the healing parts of the gospel or do the cold, hard truths of the gospel. But stop with the lukewarm stuff because otherwise you are going to make me vomit y'all out of my mouth. Because the people in Laodicea, their water was gross because it could potentially cause something called hypercalcemia, which causes you to throw up when you drink this water. You have too much uh, calcium ions, too much magnesium ions, and it upsets your stomach. And the pipes from Laodicea are just encrusted. It's hard water, and that's really tough on your kidneys. You'll get kidney stones, and if you've ever had a kidney stone, you know, oh my god, how painful it is. I've had a kidney stone before and I thought I was going to die. Jesus, y'all going to have to take the wheel because I can't drive on these painkillers because I feel like I'm going to die. So, um, yeah, the water at Laodicea was disgusting and it made you want to puke. So when you are preaching a gospel where it's like, Hey, I don't want to go to where the water's hot. I don't want to go where the water's cold. I want to stay put in my place in the world and live with my riches, and look what I can do, and look what I've done. If you want to stay put, but then you want to mix in a little bit of the gospel with that, you know what's going to happen? You're going to be lukewarm, and you're going to make people want to puke. And that's what Christians do, these fake Christians do, when they come in, and they're appealing to the world because they love to show off their works. Look what I've done. Look how caring I am. They're, they're liars, they're frauds, they're cowards because they want to stay put. They love their position here in the world and they only want a little, little piece of the gospel so that they go, oh, see, I'm religious. I believe in Jesus. No, you don't. No, you don't because you're not teaching the full counsel of God over here. You love, 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 and you never teach anything else. And because of that, people are going to go to hell because you don't teach the full counsel of God. People are going to end up in hell and their blood is going to be on your hands because you had a chance to say something and you didn't. You saw the bridge was out and you didn't want to get involved. Oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to offend them. I don't want them to think badly of me. I don't want to think, I don't want them to think that I'm weird or a Bible thumper or that I'm a bigot. Forget that. We're going to teach the full counsel of God. We're going to say the truth because we care. We want to see people get saved, even if they're upset, because the truth will make you upset. First, it's going to piss you off. Then it's going to set you free. And you can't do that if you're a lukewarm Christian. If you're a lukewarm Christian, you disgust me. They make me want to vomit, just like Jesus said he's going to vomit them out of his mouth because they're over here preaching a different gospel, a worldly gospel, and they think it makes them look good. They think it makes them look holy. And all that they're doing is pouring more condemnation on their own head. So if that's you, if you're so worried about what's politically correct instead of what the truth of the gospel is. If you're afraid to warn people about what is coming, judgment is coming, and if you're afraid to say it 
anything because you're afraid that they're going to not like you anymore. You need to shape up because guess what? I bet you're not going to like it when Jesus vomits you out of his mouth because you're too timid. You're too afraid to tell people the truth. We're here to preach the full counsel of God. Don't be one of these fake Christians. Oh, we have to love everybody and we can't condemn any sort of sin because we see fake Christians. They cut Jesus off at the knees. They preach a different gospel, one where we can't actually bring God's will here on earth. They twist scriptures all day long like it's a dish rag and we don't have time for that. We have a limited amount of time and we have to tell people about Jesus because there is a king with a kingdom and he's coming back to clean house so it's time to repent. We need to get right with God right now today. Just know that when you teach the gospel you're always going to have these people all up in your ear. Oh that's not very nice. Forget them. Just forget them. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. See them for what they really are. They're frauds. They're fakes. They're, they're cowards and have nothing to do with them because they know the truth, but they are here with an alternative message to lead people astray. So we don't have time for that. And, uh, be bold, be strong, go out, preach the gospel. That's all that I wanted to share with you. I hope you will like subscribe and share, and I will see you later. Bye.